that's using Oracle's Direct NFS drivers. Now, the Direct NFS drivers were introduced in version 11. And with later releases, 11.202, an extra facility was just slotted in to what you could do with Direct NFS. Now, the ability that was introduced in 11.202 was a copy on update capability. So when you get through your data files through the Direct NFS driver, we have the capability to point the database instance towards, in effect, two copies of the data files. One copy is a read-only, totally static version of the data files. The other copy of the data files stores only changes. So in normal operation, end users connect to the clone and all their queries will be operating against a read-only, frozen backup of the data files. Whenever they do DML, in the background, the direct NFS driver will copy just the change blocks to a copy of the data files that is specific for the clone. So what does that mean? You back up your source database once only, a one-off backup. Then you create as many clones as you want, one clone, two clone, three clones, four clones, as many clones as you want, instantaneously, virtually instantaneously, because they'll all be reading from that original copy. They can be on different machines, or they can be on the same machine. The copy can be on a local machine, or the copy can be on a remote machine. But one way or another, the clones will be instances reading from a copy, and whenever they do DML, the change blocks will be written to storage, local and specific to each clone. So each clone requires minimal extra storage. The clones appear to users to be completely independent. You can do anything with them, DML, DDL, queries, anything at all. The end result of this, though, is that a multi-terabyte clone can be created in just a couple of minutes. And the multi-terabyte clone will take up, in effect, zero disk space until you start doing a lot of DML against it. Now, this was introduced in 11202. Um, with 12C, 12, with 12 it's been formalized. It's been formalized quite nicely, and Oracle is even providing a script, which I intend to use, that makes it easier. With earlier releases, you know, it was a bit tricky to set up, whereas it's pretty straightforward now. Note, it does rely on using direct NFS, but you do not need an NFS server. And the way I'm going to demonstrate it now is all going to be on one machine. I'll create an NFS share, but it will just loop back to a local file system. So yes, we're using the direct NFS client, but we are not, in fact, using any networking capabilities.